I mean, Pop, uh, I got to be honest with you. I just got to ask you for the people. Are you Tommy DeVito? I've never seen the two of you in the same room at the same time. I got to ask. Is this is this your hobby all the weekends? Yeah, well, I may or may not look 23 years old. But so I think you, you got a better shot at being this though. Yeah, hey, I've never been seen in the same room as him either, so who knows, man. Son, I got a new word of the day. What is it? Tranquilo. Tranquilo. I like that. That's how I'm feeling too. At this point in the season, you know, four and six. You know, Ron's out the door. You know, you got your franchise quarterback. It's tranquilo time, baby. It's tranquilo. That's time. what I'm saying. I'm, I'm going to live or die, not live or die, less than the wins and losses. I want to see my boy Sam continue to cook. I like to get a few wins along the way. But I think it's all about progressing and, you know, getting ready for next year, unfortunately. 100%. And you know what? For the people who say that's loser talk, you're correct. We're losers. This team under Ron Rivera is losers. And it's going to be over soon. But for right now, we got to just make the best of what we got. I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose. lose. I need to protect myself emotionally. At a certain that's point. What, that's time. what's going on. At a, you guys heard the rant last week. Pop has had it. Pop is up to here. Oh, man. And you know so what? With this team, when you least expect it, expect it. So now I'm lowering exactly. my expectations. Who knows what might happen? So that's got to be our vibe check, I guess, at that point. Um, that's it. Both both pretty, pretty dialed in. Pop hit me earlier today. He said, son, we're doing buy or sell. I got questions for you. I'm not going to tell you what they are. You can look at the uh, – the outline here. I don't have them. I have no idea what they are. So, Pop, I mean, lay Can't it wait. on me. Let's let's get into it. So I got six commanders based questions on will you are you buying or are you selling? Now I'm not gonna hit you with the obvious obvious ones, right? I'm not gonna tell you Jack Del Rio, Ron Rivera. Obviously we're both selling them as soon as we can, right? Giving it away for free. But, we're at the right. Phil. So those aren't going to be – those are too easy. But if the season was over today and they put us out of our misery, said season's over, and we got to start preparing for next year, I want to know if you're buying or selling the following things. All right. Are you buying or selling Sam Howell as a starting QB in 2024? Bye. Next question. <laughs> are you buying or selling – Eric Bieniemy as head coach in 2024. Mm, season ends today. He's at least getting an interview, and I'm probably buying. Wow. Um, are you buying or selling Jahan Dotson? Mm. He's got a couple years left on the rookie contract. I guess you buy. Okay, so Jahan Dotson as our number two wide receiver, I'm selling. Jahan Dotson is a potential prospect I, w- I would buy. I think we need a little help at the wide receiver position. Kind of riding the fence there. Um, B-Rob, Brian Robinson, are you buying or selling? Mm. Damn, I thought this one would be a slam dunk. That's tough, man. That's tough. I mean, I guess I'm buying. He's going to be around next year. I I just don't. We don't have enough to evaluate with B-Rob right now, but I guess I'd buy if I had to. I'd but I wouldn't I'd be I'd, buy B-Rob. Wouldn't be upset if we got some help at running back either. Are you buying or selling Jamin Davis? Sell. Buy or sell. <laughs> That's a shocker. And then last one. Are you buying or selling Cam Curl, free agent? Buying, buying Cam Curl because I don't think he's going to go for a top five safety contract. So I think if you got to pay a premium for Cam, you got to. This is an unpopular fan opinion, but if you got to pay Cam like he's Derwin James, you're going to hurt yourself, and that's how this team's hurt themselves in the past. But if 
you want to keep Cam around and he's going to take what the market dictates, which I think is a top 10 safety salary, then yeah, easily keep him for sure. Yeah, things see, it feels like things have cooled on him a little bit, right? You know, you used to always get those reports. Number one rated PFF graded safety of the week last year. And I haven't really seen where, you know, he, he stood out as much, but you know, definitely yeah. a solid solid player and um somebody the secondary the secondary is such a nightmare that if we retool the whole thing if we go get a Micah Fitzpatrick or somebody like that and Cam's got to go I don't care I'm happy if we go get some studs in the secondary and we can't afford to pay Cam I, I appreciate what he's done for us he's a great player but you cannot look at this secondary and this defense right now and say anybody anybody you figure Deron Payne and John Allen because of the contracts they're under. But anybody else, you can't look at them and say they're irreplaceable. You just yeah, I think, that, I think the question is, at this point, how much of it's coaching and how much of it's talent. And yeah, I still, for sure. I still feel like there's more talent. You know, Not that there isn't some holes in certain spots, but I think that there's more talent than – they're playing below their talent level. Agree. Let me put it to you that way. Agree, hundred um, percent. And I think Del Rio is is screwing them over in terms of scheme. He's not helping anybody. They're just going out uh, there and trying to do their jobs. But they're yeah, and suck. I think, and I think the other thing related to vibe check. So I think really good on the buy or sell. I'm with you for most of it. I'm not. I think I'd sell EB if I had to, gun to head, make a choice. Although I wouldn't hate it if he became head coach. It's just hard I, to divorce. I, I'm I'm EB more in the page of. It's hard to divorce EB and Sam. I buy that. It's more of maybe him being a victim of circumstance, but I really would just prefer a clean start. And I I am getting more and more of the opinion that Sam, you know, and EB's definitely helped Sam a lot. Their, you know, package deal in terms of this year. But some of that stuff that Sam was doing off schedule, I mean, you think yeah. of – all three touchdown passes, Jordan. I don't think that that's offensive coordinator. That's quarterback. I mean, stop yeah. for a minute. You know, if you're listening and just think about all three touchdown passes were off schedule, you know, throws um, and just elite type plays. And I think I think he's starting to turn the corner and be a pl- t- type of player than any offensive coordinator would love. Um, I'm just not quite there yet, and mainly because, like I said, I just I just want a clean slate. I, I, yeah, I wanna that's – I want to restart. That was the hardest question for me to answer. I'd say, you know, if you're looking at, you know, a Ben Johnson or a Bobby Slowick, if you're able to go get a, a young offensive whiz, then I'm not mad at it. But I'm just hesitant to immediately write off EB just because – he has had a role in these crazy passing numbers and how well Howell's done and developed. And you just, it's hard to know what's going on in the building and how these decisions are being made and what, even what the goals are. Right. Um, so I'm having a, I'm having a hard time making that decision on my own. And the only reason I'm leaning towards bias is because I'd really hate to see EB go you know, be the head coach of the Chargers and win a Super Bowl or something like that. No, there's, you know, that's, I mean, that's I, I, the circumstance there, I'm a little worried about with that. There's an argument to be made for, if, you know, if you're going after that young, hot um, offensive coordinator and you got one in the building, why would that's, you and that's kind of my, why, that's why kind of my give thinking. that guy a shot? But, is if this, if this was happening a year ago and Howell was starting to thrive in Scott Turner's offense and the enemy's contract was up, the guy that we'd all be saying we have to go get to be head coach would be Eric Bieniemy. So that's where I'm a little like, how does, how can we compare Bieniemy, who's in building but is dealing with the personnel crutches that we've kind of put on him? How do we compare him to a guy like a Ben Johnson who has a much better roster, has an established veteran quarterback, has one of the best offensive lines of football? How do we compare him to a guy like a Bobby Slowick who's got you know, great young receivers. He's got CJ Stroud, who is just lightning in a bottle. How do we really compare 
them when the enemy is taking over with one hand tied behind his back with this roster and with this ownership transition and with Ron there. It's just it's hard to it's just hard to make that decision. And it might not be fair, but the vibe I get from EB is I feel like he's just so deep into being OC that you know, and I and I guess you could say the same thing about Ben Johnson or anyone else. Maybe it's not fair, but it, it feels like that step to head coach now all of a sudden sort of picking up the pieces of from what's left behind and having to retool the whole staff. Because I, what I wouldn't want to have happen is EB retains most of the staff because he's just ca- continuity there. So I would say that I, I lean so there. I was really shocked, just one last point, by your B-Rob point. I thought you were going to just slam the yes. I think uh, I've turned corner on B-Rob. I think he's really impressive. And I don't think we're giving him enough opportunities with the ball. You know, just to wrap up this part of the segment for me and we can get on to the Giants unless you got more to add. It's going to be an interesting couple of weeks coming up, right? Because we got the Giants and we're a heavy favorite. I mean, we're we're favored like we're Kansas City Chiefs playing the Giants almost. It's kind of crazy. I don't know if anyone watched the last game. Maybe, maybe you'll you'll break it down for me in your scouting report. But man, if if if, if this game doesn't go the way it's supposed to, and then you got Dallas on Thanksgiving. It could get interesting around here for, for that coaching staff. Yeah, I, I think they're they're starting to be some vibes in the league. We've seen Vegas pull the trigger. We've now seen Buffalo Bills pull the trigger on their offensive coordinator. It's it's going to be an interesting couple three weeks coming up here. See what that happens. It, yeah, that it will be. I think the the line on that game is ridiculous. I don't know who's making that line. Probably the same person that made the line on the Buffalo game last night. Um, it's That's tough. I mean, how do you favor this team nine and a half points against them? I just have no clue. I guess the national hype on Howell is starting to catch up to Vegas, finally. Um, but, you know, in terms of scouting report for the Giants, I, I, I'm going to do a more abbreviated one this week. If you want the more detailed one, head back to the last pod. It's basically the same. Um, defensively, they have lost Dexter Lawrence since then. We actually had to face him last week in Seattle. Um, so they're a little weaker on the defensive side of the ball. He's their best defensive player. So in terms of like the blitz, they're a little bit weaker, but the bottom line is pop. I think me, you, my two uncles and our Ravens insider could get pressure if we rushed five on this offensive line. So they're going to be bringing five, six, seven guys at a time. I think it, it, it matters. But it doesn't matter because Martindale's going to bring the blitz. And if we are not ready for Why that, wouldn't he? Why wouldn't we? if we're not ready for that, tell you what, changing my answer and I'm selling Eric B. Enemy. Okay. This is a, I think this is a make or break game for EB, in my opinion, with just we know exactly what they're going to do. We already know Jack Del Rio is broken. So I would say this is a get right game for Jack Del Rio and an opportunity for him to get right against uh, who. Rio Robinson on Twitter, he called him uh, called him Jackie April, which I thought was pretty <laughs> funny. The the quarterback for uh, the quarterback for the Giants, Tommy DeVito. Um, I tell you what, there's no getting right for uh, for Riverboat Ron and Jack Del Rio on the defensive side of the ball. So I, I think that ship has sailed, and I think Tommy DeVito is going to throw for three touchdowns. Um, his prop bets are probably super low, so just go take the over on all those. Um, but yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough game. I mean, the Giants just—I famously predicted the Giants to sweep us this year. I said I, mm-hmm. I thought we'd still finish ahead of them in the division, but they would sweep us. And I Pop told really me that was, out the math on that. Pop told me that was mathematically impossible. Um, and here we are in that exact situation. So that's, that's fair. <laughs> That's fair. Well, you had us at like nine and seven. So them sweeping us and us going nine and eight, I don't think was po- is, is, is mathematically very we likely. Both, we both felt a tingle on that fan duel <laughs> over eight and a half. All right. Let's move past that. Uh, let's get into our keys. I mean, there's not. Uh, but I, there's... Think, I think just to talk a little bit about your scouting report just for a second, if I, if I may. Um, it was a 14 7 game. 
So it's not like, you know, the Giants were able to put up a bunch of points. And maybe you could argue our defense got weaker because of trades, but their defense has got, you know, their offense certainly has not gotten any better because of injury. They're down to third street quarterback. So I don't think it's a situation where they're going to put up a bunch of points. It's going to come down to whether our offense can solve that blitz and not get, you know, bit against the, bit by it again. And, uh, you know, I talked a little bit about the next couple of weeks being interesting. I mean, even if you win an ugly close one and then you get the doors blown off against Dallas and Thanksgiving, which I think Dallas might be a little bit, you know, we'll see because they haven't beat an over, they haven't won against an over 500 team all season. Neither have we, but maybe that's one of those matchups like the Eagles that we can stick by. Everybody remembers what Sam Howell did at the end of last season, but. Even a close win with the perception of the commanders should be able to dominate this game, which, again, doesn't make sense to me. You know, it could get very interesting for for Ron. He might want to check the tee times uh, on his favorite golf courses in California, Pebble Beach. He's already got him booked. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Please. Uh, yeah, so let's, let's get into our three keys here. I think I, I touched on key number one, um, in the scouting report, but I think this is really the most important takeaway here. I think this is what the game's going to come down to. And it's, we got to have a better game plan and execution, um, versus the blitz. Uh, the enemy's game plan was not good. And Howell's execution was also not good. This was back. This was Nick Gates's last game as center last time we played them. And he did a bad job from what we've been told of identifying the blitz and kind of helping shift protections and stuff like that. Obviously we've seen things turn around drastically since Tyler Larson has taken over, which I mean, who would have guessed the guy that we almost never lose when is under center comes back and all of a sudden the team looks way better. It's, it's incredible who, who could have possibly, you know, looked at the numbers and figured that one out. Um, but We'll have to see if that's if that translates to this game. I think this is going to be the ultimate test, and if EB's kind of had that that step of growth, or if we come out flat again against the Giants. After it's so funny how similar of a situation it is because last time we came out flat against the Giants was after a heartbreaking loss against Philly, I think it was, and then we just had our heartbreaker against Seattle down to the last second, and lose to the Giants coming up. Hopefully we don't lose to the Giants, but we might see that same. We hope we don't see that same hangover here. Um, and that ties into key number two, which is going to be you want to see a fast start, more consistent play from the offense. Um, so, if you know, don't let that hangover be a thing. Come out fast and then keep it rolling. Just please. Yeah. Even if – I mean, we talked about last week turning, you know, punts into threes and threes into sevens. I'd be happy if we're just turning punts into threes in those middle. They got look. They're gonna point. come out. Are they gonna come out and ready to play in front of their home crowd? Right, just just like the Bears game. Yeah, and the Bills game, <laughs> and the Cardinals game. Yeah, <laughs> they will. But no, I, I think oh. it's a. I think it's a great point by you in that. That's what worries me as well. Is that people talk about this team not quitting on Ron Rivera. But when you come out and lay an egg like you do against the Bears in the last game against the Giants, and like, you know, it sure feels like this one's setting up for one of those possible scenarios again. What does that say? I mean, there's something about the team not being prepared or not being ready and almost believe in the hype. And I mean, if I'm Ron R- Rivera, I'm pretty forcefully in whatever motivational way I could come up with. I make them sit down and watch the last game tape. And I just and I actually painfully go through it. Say, look, we're still giving up get big plays against this team. And, you know, we, we could score consistently. We better be ready. So Yeah. Yeah, it was uh it was pretty pretty rough last game. Super, super frustrating to watch that. And I just I hope we see something different. I don't think we do, but key number three. Um, 
I'm more and, optimistic that offensively we're we're putting together back to back to back consistent performances and yeah I think I'm more, I think we'll be I think we'll be ready. I don't think I don't think we'll forget what happened. We'll, we'll get into that in the predictions. Um, but key number three, fortunately, we got to talk about the defense a little bit here. We're hoping the defense can get some takeaways against uh, Tommy D. Come on, guys. I mean, if you can't turn <laughs> this guy over, what the hell are we doing? What the Do hell? Do we know are if Emmanuel doing? Forbes got like a ten-game suspension for that vicious no. hit? All 130 pounds of him. Is he going to be eligible Sunday? We need Emmanuel Forbes to get some <laughs> of the cutlets out of Tommy D's fridge so he can bulk up a little bit. Um. I mean, Pop, uh, I got to be honest with you. I just got to ask you for the people. Are you Tommy DeVito? I've never seen the two of you in the same room at the same time. I got to ask. Is this is this your hobby all the weekends? Yeah, well, I may or may not look 23 years old. So I think you got a, you got a better shot of uh, being his double. But hey, hey, I've never been seen in the same room as him either. So who knows? Maybe I asked that question to throw you off. Get my arm. I'll tell you I what. Know. I had a wild... <laughs> But I had a wild weekend up in New Jersey at some point. You never know. If we can't, <laughs> if we can't turn this, uh, apologies we can't to turn my this, lovely wife for that. One. <laughs> if we can't turn this thing around against Tommy DeVito, oh god, oh god, we're not going to. Let's get into the predictions. All right, um, come on, son. Commanders minus nine and a half. Pop. Just go ahead. Tell me what you think about that line. Who you got I, there? I can't give us nine and a half. No, I think that's a <laughs> you'd have to thing. be high. You'd yeah, have to. Be I high. will say we'll 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 win. I think it'll be kind of. It, it won't go down to like a, a final kick or or any of that situation, but I, I'd see it being much more of a one score game. Maybe it ends with Sam taking a knee. Um, but uh, I don't see us covering nine and a half. I just I just can't see. I'd love it. Yeah, I'd absolutely yeah. love to be sitting back my feet up up two, three scores towards the end of that game. Would absolutely welcome and enjoy that. Start tremendous. recording the pod midway through the third quarter. I mean, how absolutely. can you imagine? Like a Chiefs fan. Like a Chiefs fan. Like one of God's yeah. favorites. But Oh man, no! I I'm with you. I think there's absolutely no way. I don't even know if we win this game. I think this might be one of those games where they're so bad we can't lose. But I think there's no way we win by nine and a half points. That's uh, that's that's not happening. But Pop, Pop's got some breaking news for the people. What you got? I got breaking news here, son. Both your uncle Max and Mister Ken picking the commanders in their survivor pools. Wow. It was out for confidence. Wow. Hammer the Giants money oh, line. Hot people. off the press. Hammer Giants money line. I mean, Uncle Max will probably likely never hear this. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> Hammer Giants money line. Oh, man. That's tough. Yeah, I, I can't I can't in good faith predict that we win any game by ten points. I mean, and if you want to say they're the worst team in football, so are the Chicago Bears when we lost to them forty to twenty. So you never know what's gonna happen. I'm certainly I think like I said, I think these guys might be so bad that we can't lose, but I am only gonna predict the points and I'm gonna predict that the Giants cover. That's my prediction. I don't feel any more confident about this game than I did the last time. I'm sorry, yep. but that's I how hate, I feel. I hate playing this damn team, and I can't yeah. wait until Dayball goes back to Buffalo. So my love I'm not falling in the trap. Tranquilo. Yeah. Tranquilo. Tranquilo until about two minutes into the second quarter, and something's going to flip. But anyways – Let's get into our bottom bet. Speaking of tranquilo, um, this was uh, this was a big was week for, for me. Skifoso. This was a big week for the pod. The bottom bets. Pop got off to such a hot start, and I told him, I said, "Pop, I'm coming for you, man. I'm gonna catch you. This is not not sustainable." And sure enough, 
Last week, Pop goes 0 3 and 2. I went 2 1 pushes, and 2. What's yeah, up the, with pushes the pushes are pushes. tough. Pushes Bears are tough, and Lions, man. you're weak. Pushes are tough. But, um, so we're both tied now for the year at 27, 22, and 3. So I prefer to say we're both scorching hot. Five games over 500. Yeah. Come on. I mean, tell me what betting site gets you there, people. Come on. Come on. A couple of Joe Schmoes doing it for you. Yep. And let's get into it right away. I mean, straight up game of the week on Thursday night football. Finally, a good game on Thursday night. We got the Bengals at the Ravens. Ravens, three and a half point favorites there at home. What do you like there, Pop? Yeah, brutal loss for the Ravens. You know, it's one of those where. And for the Bengals. And for the Bengals, yeah. Don't yeah. bring that up. I don't want to talk about it. It's Piazza. It. It's Piazza. Uh, Tyler Boyd is banned from the Tenali. Tyler Boyd is, I don't <laughs> want to hear his name again. Um, now I really feel like the, the, the Ravens look like their dominant selves for three or four quarters. A couple of bad bounces, breaks, took their foot off the gas. I still think that's one heck of a football team. And I think the Bengals took took a pretty good lump last week against the Texans. And I think, you know, I'm going to go Ravens. I think the Ravens are just a better football team at home, coming out angry. They can't do that to our insider again. Yeah. I'll go, Ravens. I'll go Ravens too. I think the Ravens have the Bengals number. I think they got something figured out about, uh, about Burrow. Um, but, yeah, they, they showed some flaws last week so we'll see this this will be interesting um sunday one o'clock steelers at browns browns minus four this one hilariously enough has like some serious playoff implications here because the afc is just so loaded this year you've got uh a lot of seven and two and uh six and three teams right now so this one's this one matters because i think they both have the same record the steelers and the browns this could have wild card implications yeah, I think at the end of the day, you know, Browns are at home coming off a yeah. big victory. They've been on a bit of a roll lately. I feel like they're just a better team. I mean, they are giving up the four points, which I don't love, but Tingle says Browns. I'm going to go Stullers here. Um, I think the Browns win. I think that four points is a lot. Um, I really don't like Kenny Pickett against this defense. Yeah, but that, that was I, part of my thinking for sure. I also really don't, don't see like, how they get on the board. I, I just don't have sustained faith in the quarterback play in Cleveland. I, it's just so inconsistent. Um, and I, I hate rooting for that guy. So I'm going Steelers. Um, Sunday at four o'clock, Seahawks minus one at the Rams. What do you got there, Pop? So surprise you that that line isn't bigger than that? <sighs> to be honest with you, no. Because I don't think the Seahawks are that good. I think we saw last weekend that the Seahawks are not that good and we should have beat that team. But And the Rams are? I digress. Stafford is potentially coming back this week. Stafford's been out for a couple yeah. of years. So if, Sta- if Stafford's back, they can fling that ball around. The have you watched him play the last couple of years? Um, they can, they can I'm fling that the, ball around. I'm going with the Seahawks. Have I watched them play? You were the one telling me the Rams were going to make a bounce back. Check the tape on that one. I told you no. Yeah, I was wrong. Come on now, Pop. I can admit when I'm wrong. So. Come on now, Pop. I'll take the Rams at home getting a point. Why not? Oh. Why not? This is a bad pick on a Tuesday you when, you the, uh, when the Seahawks are questionable. But Pop playing a little bit of psychological warfare here. I'm playing straight X's and O's. Rams getting a point at home. It's a divisional game. I think it's a pick I think both teams stink. It's a rivalry um, game. It is. It is, technically. Uh, Sunday Night Football, Vikings at Broncos. Broncos minus two and a half. Broncos all of a sudden looking like a half-decent football team, or do the Bills just stink? Looks like they figured out something defensively. What's I mean, going on they, there, They beat the Chiefs, too. So yeah, they did. I think, they are, I think the Broncos are starting to figure it out. They're one of those teams that's something about their face. I hate picking them. I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> you know, I don't, I'm not a fan of either their coach or their quarterback. <laughs> Um, uh, I think I got to pick with my head, not my heart, and go Broncos. I think 
at some point, it, you know, it's a, a great story in, 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 in Vikings land, but I think Josh Dobbs at some point is going to level down a little bit. Broncos defense is starting to play pretty well as well. And uh, and Russ is starting to look a little more like Russ. I was going to say, did you see that touchdown pass last night to Cortland Sutton? He, he made a few spectacular type plays and made some plays with ah. legs and – He's starting to look a little bit better, and you know, as much as I'm not a huge Sean Payton fan, he he's a heck of a coach. So, yeah, I gotta go Broncos here. I think Vikings yeah, take down the now the Vikings win this one, then you gotta give them some some real uh, credit. Rolling with the Vikes here. Um, Damn, I think your boy Jettas is going to be back this week, right? I don't and. Know. I think Jefferson is supposed to be back this week. Um, and I just don't don't love this Broncos team. I think it's more an issue of Mahomes was really sick, like fl- had the flu that game. Um, and they always kind of have the Chiefs number. And the Bills, I think, are just really having an identity crisis right now. And I like the I like the Vikings. The Vikings are hot. I love me some KOC, um, and especially if Jefferson's back, I think defensively, I don't think they're facing anything more challenging than they faced against uh, against New Orleans. And I think Josh Dobbs is legit, man. I, I said it when we played him in uh, in Arizona. I said it, been saying it all year. I, th- I think Josh Dobbs is actually a starting quarterback in the NFL. He's not just this journeyman that's getting bounced around everywhere. I think he belongs as a starting quarterback. So I think they're I'm a little too quick to make those declarations after a couple of games. But I mean, Dad, there's 32 quarterbacks. He's got to be one of the best 32. I'm not saying he's, you know, I was going to say got, Josh Allen. Why, why did he get shipped out of uh, – Because Kyler's back. Kyler why? Murray is playing football again. That's Eagles, why. Chiefs, <laughs> Monday Night Football. <laughs> I don't want to have a Josh Dobbs argument with you. What's going on here, Pop? Why do you get you no. in Arizona? Kyler Murray's back. Eagles at Chiefs. Chiefs three-point favorite Super Bowl rematch. This is going to be a hell of a game. Monday Night Football. Bring your popcorn. Um, what do you got here, Pop? I'm sticking with my number one power-ranked team. Chiefs at home. They're going to be out to prove something. But that's a hell of a game. Super Bowl rematch. you got to figure the Eagles are going to want to prove a little something in that. That is must see TV. That is going to be On great. Thanksgiving That's week. Set the scene for you there. That is, I'm off that whole week. We'll be at home recipe testing for my Thanksgiving festivities. And so there's going to be some some fried chicken, some mac and cheese, some real good stuff ready no to turkey. Be I'm not a turkey guy. It's not going to be turkey in my thing. Oh my god! We'll, we'll, but, we'll have that for a Thanksgiving episode. But. Uh, I'm going to be fired up, eating good food, got a week off, psyched on that. Um, and I'm going to get to watch that game and just enjoy it in all of its glory. Do you, do you have a be, pick, son? Which will be a Chiefs victory by more than three. Oh, I'm going to take the gonna... Chiefs here, too. I'm going to take the Chiefs here, too. I think the Eagles are the better team, but Chiefs at home in big games, you don't pick anybody else. You don't pick anybody other than Patrick Mahomes at home in a big game. That's just... What you do, but I would not be surprised if the Eagles win. But at the end of the day, no, you can't be surprised by that. At the end of the day, do we know if Taylor Swift's going to be there? Because that's going to impact whether or not I start Jake Ferguson or Travis Kelsey. Travis was we at her that. concert, but I think she was like in South America or something like that. I don't know if I got that right. I think she might I'm have enough really money to Swifty. get on a private jet. I think she might. It might be tight for her, but I think she could work a private it's jet. Close. It's close. <laughs> oh, hey, if, you know, you need somebody to serve drinks or two very handsome gentlemen. Just bring the vibes. Varying age groups just to bring the vibes. <laughs> I don't know if I can get rid of the vibes of my knee. But oh, um, so I don't know, three or four games picked differently. This could be a big week for you, son, or not. You were zigging a little bit or zagging a little bit, I should say. Yeah, we're zigs. going we're going here and here. You know, last week I just kind of I mean Steelers, Rams, and Vikings in those games. Those are pretty bold picks. Follow in my, my gut. Opinion. Follow my gut. 
I don't know. My gut has led me astray several times, so I'm going to keep following it. <laughs> it's all we got in this world, right? So it's yeah. intuition, even though, you know, sometimes intuition and FanDuel, they don't get along very well, but it's okay. Let's wrap this thing up, Pop. Another great episode. Guys, if you're still watching at this point, I mean, what are you doing? Subscribe. You know, you know you enjoyed it if you've been here for 35 minutes. Come on. So hit that subscribe button. Tell a friend. Hit us up on Twitter, Instagram, all the good stuff. Pop, let's wrap this thing up. Without further ado, I've been Dom. This is Tom. Love me, baby. Oh.